Um, cool. So I think um, Matt had he's, he left, but my team has wanted yeah. to set it up, and I think your team have decided we should talk about entering the sports, sports industry. The, sure. Yeah, so do you wanna? Is yeah, that? sure. I mean, for me, it's the most common question because people want to work in sports. Yeah. And I think they forget about passion, purpose, and profitability, Got and it. they limit their point of entry. So. A lot of people that want to get in sports, they're very specific about, I want to be the general manager of the Yankees, or I want to be a sports agent, where the reason I excelled in the industry of sports is I realized that it was based off of three things. One are skills, and so I really honed my skills to be the best at what I did. Knowledge, so I sought true mentorship and knowledge that was necessary to be profitable in sports. And then maintaining the inspiration and how much sacrifice are you willing to take? So my good friends who are like Mike Tannenbaum, who's the GM of the Jets and executive vice president of the Dolphins, and they actually, early on in our careers, they sacrificed so much more than I was willing to sacrifice because, you know, I I say it wasn't luck. Those guys worked for like $600 a month with $100,000 of law loans. Right, right, right. Um, You know, and, and Cashman, you know, he interned for free. I wasn't willing to do that when I graduated law school. But instead, I took a different path where instead of starting at the bottom and sacrificing so much, I just honed my skills so that nobody in sports could ignore me someday. Right, right, right. right? I learned the business inside and out by being a customer yeah. of sports, mm-hmm. advertising, sponsorship, endorsement, right. speaking engagements, and I learned the business and I, and I allowed my career to evolve by picking the industry after I've already excelled in Right. other industries so I use my technology background yeah, yeah, I yeah. use my sales skills uh-huh. uh, to illustrate to other people that wow this guy would be an incredible right. you know CEO of a sports agency right, right, right. Uh, which I ended up that was my first Why job in sports you, um, I'm sure all the a lot of young people are coming out and they're thinking about either technology innovation Google Facebook's of the world or they're still looking at industries like finance or sports um, what do you think about innovation in the sports industry? Well, I love you know innovation in all industries, especially sports, uh-huh. uh, because you know sports is an, is really an industry that encompasses all these other right. There's sports medicine, and they all have innovation. Yeah. You know, from sports journalism to sports medicine to sports marketing to sports PR, all uh-huh. of them have innovation. The thing that I'm most concerned about young people is that they understand the difference between innovation and entrepreneurship. Right. And I know we're here. Um, and to me, you know, innovation is, is very creative, right. it's very competitive, and the reason it's so competitive is there's millions of great ideas out there. But the true people, yeah. right, the Ray Crocs of the world, they take other people's innovations like the, the speedy service system right. that McDonald's use right. and learn how to monetize it, right. right? And so it's great that you have your own innovative thoughts, uh, but to create a career in innovation, mm-hmm. I know large companies have business units for innovations and they take the brightest innovators in the world. Uh-huh. To me, that's not appealing and I think it's misleading for most of us because we can't survive on innovation alone. Right, right. We can't survive on just creating good ideas. Yeah. We have to learn how to bring it down into the pragmatic world on how to make money from it or do business from it or help, help people with it. Cool. And then, um, obviously, you sports agency but then you see people like Danica making up her own personality and being approachable herself. Uh, what do you think is the role of the sports agent today and in the next five years? Um, you know it, it's still to protect uh, the athlete mm-hmm. um, so the agency thing the, the legal side of it is really where the agent has always historically belonged. Right. Now there's managers and, and PR people and and other things that have really evolved into Uh the social media aspect of it, the entrepreneurial side, you know, mentorship. But a true agent really gives you the best protection in a legal sense. Uh, And and Uh that will, I think, continue on that the best lawyers like Lee Steinberg, the the best agents out there will always be able to be very creative with salary caps and collective bargaining agreements and endorsement deals to maximize how uh, do the you protection. See, um, the rise of influencer marketing affecting sponsorship dollars. Oh, it's it's huge because it allows even people like me to build my own brand, mm-hmm. right? Right now, I don't think people understand that there's a huge opportunity with four billion people on the internet, and that if you find your own frequency, you could have an audience of one or two million dollars as an individual. Right. Whether you're a third string shortstop 
or an ex-sports agent. But it relies on you being um, creative, right, as an athlete and, you know, caring about content and engagement, which, you know, athletes traditionally have done sponsorship deals without even thinking about what they're doing. They don't have just, the time. Yeah. So yeah. does it actually hurt the athlete because athletes are not inherently, you know, creative and... See, I, I don't think so because what most people don't realize are the top athletes are the one that get 90% of the money. Right. And they're going to continue to do that because the agencies and the and the brands will have their own social media people. They still will just show up. Right. They'll just be people. Now, where I think it's interesting is I've always, you know, looked at and why we wouldn't represent at least Steinberg, lower level athletes that don't have the time right. but still have a social influence and a community influence because people look up to you just because you're on the team. Right. And so now we can allow the awareness and profile and branding for athletes that were never known before. So I don't think it in any way diminishes the capacity of who's already making the money. Right. I think it spreads out the opportunity for those that never were able to make it. Oh, cool. Okay, so brands today who are not engaging in sports, why would you tell them to you know, uh, dip their toe into the sports sponsorship field when that might not be their forte? Great question, and, and there's one reason. is people buy on emotion for logical reasons. And there's nothing except for children that will move somebody emotionally, a larger audience, no matter what your product is, right? I work with companies like L'Oreal, right. and they dip their toe, now they have Redken Brews, right. uh, the, the male side of it. But the truth is, NFL is the most popular sport two to one for women in America over anything else. And the greatest thing is nothing's more emotional than sports, and, it, and now that we have social media, you could be a lacrosse fan or a bow fan or a pole vaulting fan, and you could have your own community, and advertisers could advertise or endorse or sponsor that specific community so easily. So I think uh, you're, you're limiting the possibilities and limiting the opportunity of any brand if you don't understand the emotional aspect that sports brings to the table.